Welcome back, my friends, to another Luminous Mysteries. My name's Tom, and today is March 14, 2022. Um, we got Daniel 9, 4 through 10, and then Luke 6, 36 through 38. All right, so let's jump in here at Daniel. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed. Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the peoples, peoples, people of the land. Sorry. Lord, you are righteousness. But this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judah and Jerusalem, all Israel, both near and far, and all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. We and our kings, our princes, our ancestors are covered with shame, Lord, because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he has given us through his servants, the prophets. And then we're going to go to Luke 6.36. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with this measure you use, it will be measured to you. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. All right, let's jump into what I wrote earlier. The Lord God is one undivided being who has manifested himself in a human form. Because the Lord God is one and undivided, and infinite, all is created within the Lord God, within his human form, Jesus. If we look at our Lord Jesus, we see that he has arms, legs, lungs, a liver, kidneys, a heart. We are also an image of God. We too contain these things within our bodies. Likewise, our Lord also describes his children within the church as one body. This is also an image of him with all the parts contained within the church. In our first reading from Daniel, he is praying to God for mercy. But we need to back up a bit and understand his prayer on a deep, to understand his prayer on a deep, deeper level, level. Daniel was a servant of God and a servant of the king of Babylon, Darius, a Medi by descent. This means that the kingdom of Babylon, which the Jews uh, were in, was taken over by an outside power. They had thought of themselves as their own gods. This was the basis of the tower, the building of their own egos, their own inner selves into their own gods. As they built their inner towers, they strayed away from the path of God, the commandments and the laws handed down from them, down from Moses. Daniel received a disturbing vision of the end times just prior to this prayer we read about today. This vision was so disturbing it took him days to recover. This also prompted him to dive deeper into scriptures to gain some better insight into the vision and the current situation of his brothers and sisters. Daniel, Daniel even though he was a prophet and a servant to the king, was still a part of the body of Jews in Babylon. His prayer reflects his understanding that he is one with all the, of his brothers and sisters. Even if they have lost their way and built themselves into gods of their own, Daniel is on his face prostrate in front of God in the temple praying for the body of the church. He, as a part of that body, and is, subject to its, is also subject to the corrections that will be coming from God to the Jews. The corrections viewed in human eyes as punishments, but in heavenly eyes as mercy. 
God steps to the side because of their free will choice to become gods of their own. No longer under the protection of all of heaven and no longer influenced by that heavenly love. We receive the influence in our thoughts and our actions from angels and saints that are with us in every moment in ev and in every place we travel. When we are faced towards heaven and we receive all the benefits of receiving heaven's love. But as Daniel seen in the text that when you are faced away from God and heaven, you are cut off from that love. Not because God in heaven doesn't, don't, doesn't want you to have their love, but because you reject the love and influence. Heaven never stops praying for you even when you reject heaven. In fact, heaven and your angels pray much harder for you in these times. As we see through the ac actions of Daniel, he prayed to God as if it was him and only him who had rejected God. Because of Daniel's actions, we can see his connectedness with his brothers and sisters and his connectedness with the will of God. Daniel is pleading with God and praying for heaven to influence his family to turn back to God and to the path of ascension into heaven. We read last week about all of our actions are forgiven when we change course. If we have lived a holy and devout life we, and we turn away from God, all of our good deeds are forgotten and we'll re receive our just rewards for our evil deeds committed. And likewise, if we are an evil, evil person or wicked, I should say, our whole lives and turn back to God, it is our in our last moments, all of our evil deeds will be forgotten. This seems on the surface unfair to our human perception, but it is a great mercy extended to us by God on both in, in both instances. In the first case, if we are holy and turn away from God, we are immediately allowed to feel the exper and experience the fruits of that choice. We are not protected and are allowed to continue or we are we are not protected and allowed to continue an illusion because heaven is protecting us. It is in the experiencing of losing the love of God that is the mercy of God. This is the heaven's attempts to help you see what you lost when you lose your way. And for the latter case, God desperately wants you to choose him. Even in the last moments of your life, you will be ex extended all the graces and mercy ne needed. You may still have to spend some time in purgatory to purify your soul so that it can receive the fullness of God's love. However, this is still a huge blessing and a mercy the Lord extends to us. The truth is what our God, our Lord is talking about. The truth is what our Lord is talking about to us today in today's gospel. Sorry, that's a mouthful. The last words we read today are be merciful as, or the first words we read today are, is be merciful as your father is merciful. God's mercy is, as stated above, is mercy we extend to each other. Because we are still connected as Daniel was connected to his fellow Jews in his lifetime. If your brother has turned away from God and is building himself into a God of his own, seeking to place God's children under his control, you must protect him or her in that choice. Let them feel the fullness of being separated from God's love. You must also never stop praying for them as Daniel demonstrates. And when they turn back to God, you must forgive and forget their transgressions because this is the will of God. And God demonstrates that to those who seek him. This measure of forgiveness and consistent petition on the behalf of the lost is what Jesus is speaking about today. The more we care for the lost, yet stand by and let them experience the fruits of their labors, the more we too will be given in this manner. Our good works will be rewarded with a much deeper and stronger faith in God. Because as we see the glory of God's mercy in action and our prayers are answered, uh, because we see the glory of God's mercy in ac action and our prayers are answered, which is why our, our faith grows deeper and stronger. Heck, just look at my life or ask my parents if their prayers for me were answered. In watching my path in life has brought them into greater, by watching my path in life, it has brought my parents into greater and deeper faith in God. This also is just a shadow of what Mary, the mother of Christ, got to witness. 
In summary, we are all connected into one body, just as God is completely united as one with all creation held within him. How we must treat each other is how we are treating ourselves because of this truth. That God's mercy is always upon us. This we can see if we look into our situation from a heavenly point of view. And we must pray for each other as if we are praying for ourselves because we are all connected as one body in Christ Jesus. By this measure, God's blessings will overflow, the blessings of greater faith and deeper love for God. Um, but there's not really much I can add to that. I know the lighting's terrible. It's super bright outside. The uh, sun's shining and is bouncing out the snow and shining right into the room. So I look like I'm in a shadow. But... Um, I shared uh, in a post about uh, what I ended up reading along in the in the book I've been working on by uh, Swedenborg right after I wrote this, and uh, it for you know it, it always ties hand in hand. But I wanted to share with this what I read this morning. This is in Volume Nine of Direction for Our Times, given to Anne the Lay Apostle, and this is on angels. Uh, this is August 27, 2004, Lucretian Lequish- from Anne. Uh, this is Jesus speaking. Yes, it is true, the beings of light that surround my little soldiers. And if you ask for help, you will receive more help. There is no question my remnant being, uh, there is no question of my remnant being abandoned. The only thing that hampers heavenly assistance is the lack of faith on the part of my children. When faith is weak, souls fear fear they are vulnerable. This fear can be exploited by those who would like to see souls turn away from me and turn back to the world. You must be very determined to walk my path during this time of transition. I am relying on my children to salvage as many brothers and sisters as possible through their work with me. Be confident in the ones who surround you, the angels. They are your assistants, so to speak. Treat them with the greatest love, love, and respect, often acknowledging their presence. You do this through little prayers, perhaps prayers thanking God or sending you such an honor for sending you such an honor guard. You do this when you are in a situation where you do not know what you want to do or what to say. You can say then, you can then, you can then say, angels from heaven direct my path. This prayer is a short yet, uh, this prayer is short and yet you are asking for clear direction to, uh, to the heavenly course. This is a powerful and pleasing prayer and you will have great graces to the answering of this prayer. Use this often without your throughout your day and you will not be disappointed in the help you receive through it just as saints have enhanced powers during this time so do the angels you will want to use everything at your disposal and you will truly become an invincible servant of god i intend great holiness for all who answer my call so there's a i read that this morning before i even read the daily readings and everything kind of goes back together. Um, You know, the church is uh, an image of God, you know, Christ being the head of it and us being the the parts of the body. (coughs) Just as um, we have unseen parts of our body, you know, our, our spirit side, our, our soul, you know, the, um, and so heaven is also a part of that same church. It's the spirit side of the same church. And, you know, it's it's all throughout the Bible. It's, it's definitely rooted in church teaching. The angels are always around us, and they're always ready to help us. And um, they, when you are open to heaven's help, will influence your thoughts and constantly help direct you back towards your focus being on heaven and not on in on earthly things 
and uh, you know that's that's our goal here, right? We're 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 we are wanting to support each other in our journey towards becoming saints because you know becoming a saint is not a goal for somebody else; it's a goal for you. That's what Jesus calls us all to be. He says, "I want to grant you holiness to all. Uh, I intend to grant holiness to all who answer my call." And that is the call that he calls for us in in all the gospels, in the Bible, and and in in our um, our church attendance in life. Um, it's it's that call to become a saint, and we don't have to be uh, a saint acknowledged by the church and 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 great in the eyes of the church. In fact, it's the saints that aren't recognized by the church, the the unknown saints that are the greatest in heaven. You know the. The least is the greatest, right? It is the ones that served a quiet life and received no glory or by in a by by the the world. They just they they lived to serve and they sought no fame, no glory. Uh, it was all just for the love of loving. And that is how we turn our heart towards God is to love just for the fact that we are loved, not for any other gain. Because um, there's no gain in it when you love in that fashion. Uh, you don't walk into a situation um, and immediately follow you know, into the habits of manipulating that situation or that conversation to your benefit. You are immediately recognized for walking into a conversation or, or being a part of a, a conversation or situation, and everybody already knows that you're not in it for you. You're in it to support whoever is talking to you or whoever is in need of assistance, that kind of thing. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a physical, you know, Joe down the street needs his lawn mode. It can be, it can just be emotional support. It can be, you know, an ear to listen to. Sometimes, sometimes people just need a someone that they can talk to and speak through the situation. And you don't even have to offer any advice. You just listen. And as long as you maintain the thoughts in your head that I only want the best for this person, I only want the best best outcome for them they'll they'll it'll be it'll be written on your sleeve it'll be written on your heart it'll be written on your face so we are like my the picture says 1 Corinthians chapter 12 we are are, are all um, in the body of Christ and we're all here to support each other and the more of us that become saints the holier our body becomes our church body our physical body um as swedenborg says Everything is uh, there. Uh, he calls them coincidences or, or uh, coincidences. So every you know what what is above is reflected below, and we see that in every level of nature, all the way down to the smallest of atoms. That you know the smallest of things that we can perceive. And in fact, even you know at the quantum level, things are changed just by a perception. And we see that in our view between heavenly and worldly things. A situation can be wildly different but just by the change of our perception. Just like on the quantum level, uh, an atom uh, shot through two slits will either form two clouds or it will form a bunch of waves depending on whether or not there's an observer. And, you know, all of creation is, is is a reflection on on what's higher, which is the God, God in heaven, which is above and within. Because we carry Christ, we carry God within our, our hearts. So God is also in heaven, so heaven is also within us. And we can find that heaven when we look, when we knock on that door, and when we love each other. Anyway, it's... Going on 20 minutes. Thank you for listening while I ramble and share with you all the wonderful experience of God. Um, 
like, share, subscribe, uh, and all that happy stuff. And I hope we join each other in heaven as saints on the last day. I love you all. Have a wonderful day.